I'm going to now talk about then the difference between your work and your job. Very quickly, please make notes here. First of all, think beyond your job. Say that with me. Think beyond your job. Say it loud. Think beyond your job. Tell your neighbor right in their face. Think beyond your job. Listen, most people are depressed when they get fired because they did not think beyond their jobs. There's life after your job. There's life after retirement. And believe me, nothing is more dangerous today than retiring. Because, you know, when your great-grandfather used to retire, you know, you, you retired at 65 and you're dead at 70. Today, because of the increase in medical science, you can live to be 80 to 85 average. If you retire at 60, how many years you got left? 25 years more and you are retired. What are you going to do for another quarter of your life? Therefore, you cannot put your hope in a job. And let me tell you something right away. The company you work for, the minute you hit 65, they already start singing the hymns. <laughs> Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Why? You're 65. They already see the young guy come out of college who want to actually work for less. You with me? The older you are, the more expensive you are to the company. So wake up and think beyond your job. That means that the solution to your future success is not in the job you have, it's in what you're thinking beyond the job. And that's why I'm here in this session. Make a note of this. There's no future in any job. I guess those who got fired proved that, right? You got laid off. Or, or they only got you on two days work. You realize your future is being attacked by the fact that they laid you off. So you got to cut back on your standard of living. Maybe even lose a car and lose a house. Why? Because your future, you put in your job. No job has a future in it. Make a note of this please. The future is in the one who holds the job. Don't ever allow an organization to be your hope. Every job is temporary. No matter how much they praise you and love you, <laughs> you better think beyond that position. Because when this thing is all over, they will tell you bye-bye. There are folks in this room who have been retired for five years already, and they begin to scratch their heads. Why did I retire? Because life goes on. I'm glad you're here. And young people, please remember what I'm saying because you got a chance to not make mistakes that older people have made. Write this down, please. Create your business in your job. Now, I'm going to explain this in a minute, how this works, because you must make yourself indispensable by refining the value you are to that job. Now, you can't really depend on a job, but you can actually make yourself so valuable that you're the last one they want to let go. And how do you make yourself valuable to a job? you become indispensable. How? By refining your gift on the job. In other words, you make yourself so important to the company by investing in your own gift that they don't want you to go. You know, every job I've ever had, if I can remember far back as I can, they always wanted me to stay. The last one I resigned from was from the government. I used to work for the Ministry of Education. Then I was moved down to the public, public personnel. And I worked with the Deputy Prime Minister years ago, uh, the late Sir Clement Maynard. And I resigned five times. Why? They kept refusing my resignation. Why? They said, we don't want you to leave the system because you work effectively, they said. You remember Daniel? You should read the book of Daniel sometime. Daniel made himself so valuable, the king said he was an excellent worker and no one wanted to get rid of Daniel. There are some people who can't wait till you leave. Why? You're not an asset. You are a deficit to the company. There are supervisors praying for you to resign. Why? You are not a, a, a help to the company. You don't, you've made yourself a problem rather than a solution. When there's a downsizing taking place in an economy like this, the first person to let go is the one who caused all the problems. That's probably why some people are fired, because you, you, you think it was... No, they, were, they, are, they are happy for the crisis. Why? Finally can get rid of you legally and give a reason for it. Yeah, because you made yourself 
a nuisance. But if you make yourself indispensable by serving your gift with quality and becoming more and more valuable by solving problems for people, they won't let you go. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you before we end this session that the key to becoming prosperous is solving problems. You are kept for the problems you solved. You are let go for the problems you create. People ask me all the time, how are you doing? My answer is, I'm a solution, not a problem. And I mean that. I said to myself all the time, I solve problems. That's why I'm valuable. I'm valuable because I'm solving your problems tonight. If you want to become the same way, you've got to be able to find problems that you can solve and then solve them. Don't look for a job. Look for a problem. People looking for money. Don't look for money. Look for a problem. You solve problems, you get paid. So that's different between your job and your work. Let me give you the differences real quick. Never confuse your job with your work. Why? Your job is what they train you to do. Your work is what you were born to do. Your job is your career. Your work is your life assignment. Your job is your skill. Your work is your gift. You know why they let people go during the crisis? Because your skill come a dime a dozen. They could fire you because they don't need your skill, but they can never fire your gift. It goes with you. A person who knows their gift can never get fired. <laughs> this is why you have to study what is my gift. Now, our problem is our cultures have not trained us to find a gift. They train us to find a job. So they tell you, go get a skill. Remember those words? The problem is, your skill is dispensable. Who told you I can need your skill all along? Plus, if I've been using your skill for 20 years, and now you are making $20,000 a year, and a young guy came out of college with a more refined skill in your area. He only wants 25. You're gone. In other words, skills are dispensable. But gifts can never be taken away. Write this down, please. Your work. You can retire from your job, but you can't retire from your work. I've never seen a fish who says, I tired swimming. <laughs> I retire. I don't, I, I don't swim no more. I've never seen a bird that says, I, I retire from flying. I've never seen a seed that says, I retire from bringing forth a tree. In other words, you never retire from your gift. You can retire from your work, from your job rather, from your skill. And many people in this room are actually suffering right now because they retired from their skill. You are you as a secretary, no one wants you anymore. You're a skillful secretary, but they don't want secretaries. So your skill has become your curse. 20 years of experience as a secretary. I mean, you know everything about clerical stuff. The people don't want your skill. So you better find something else, which is your gift. Make a note of this, please. Jobs prepare you for your work. Say it loud. Jobs prepare you for your work. While you are on a job, learn as much as you can. Because my justification for a job is simple. Jobs are opportunities where you are paid to learn. Can I say it again? Jobs are gifts that God gave you to be paid to learn. Don't always try to get a job you really want. Get the one that's available. And don't always think you want a job that will only suit what you really like to do. Get a job that's available. Why? Let them pay you to learn some new skills some new experiences, to meet some new people. How many people have helped me who I used to work with years ago and that relationship still lasts and now they are managers of a bank and we used to work in a warehouse together. So now that relationship has actually opened doors for me to get a loan because I worked at that warehouse. My friend is the manager. See, sometimes your job is not to give you money, it's to give you relationships. So don't always go for a job because of money. Most folks don't have a job today because they're looking for the right money. It ain't money. 
that brings the job importance. What makes the job important is that you can get paid to learn something and to also learn people. Is this clear? All right. Make a note of this, please. The power of work. Jobs are temporary, but work is permanent. You know, the, the work of a fish is swimming. <laughs> swimming in a certain part of the, the pool is his job. If you took the fish out of the pool and put him in a pond, have you taken away his ability to swim? His gift went with him, even though you fired him from the, from the pool. See, when they get rid of you, carry a gift with you. Wherever you land, keep on swimming. Because it wasn't the skill that they took away from you. It was the location for you to be in your gift. No matter where I am for the rest of my life, I can never be poor again. Because I've discovered my gift. I will not allow my country or my culture to determine my value anymore in my life. No one will ever determine how much I'm worth anymore. And you've got to get to the point where you are free from the spirit of jobs. And you ignite the spirit of work. And use every job to refine your work. Make a note of this, please. You can never retire from your job. From your, from your work, rather. But you can retire from your job. Retirement is not in the Bible. It's a capitalist concept. Retirement is not even biblical. You are never supposed to retire. You're supposed to simply finish your work and leave. I have finished my course. I, I, Paul never retired. Christ said, it is finished. He didn't retire. You leave after you finish something. Some of the most miserable people in the world are retired people. Do you know why? You were never created to stop working. What is work? Becoming. If you stop becoming, you stop existing. No wonder why you're so paranoid and hate everybody. Because you ain't being yourself lately. People who live long are those who have found something that they love to do all their lives. If you can't wait to get rid of your job, it's because it's not your work. Number four, your work protects you from your job. Write that down. If you learn your work, you're not afraid if they take away your job. When they threaten to fire you, you should say, it's okay. Why? You could take away my job, but you can't take away my work. You can take away my skill, but you can't take away my gift. You can take away the activity, you can't take away the ability. Your gift is more important than your skill. 